Cindy and I are here in the new Anna Porter Public Library in Gatlinburg, and we're going to be talking about some of the things happening in Gatlinburg. Cindy, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Mike? I'm doing great. You know, somebody said at one time that every good city deserves a good library. Well, I feel we're a great city, and we've got a great library here. You are exactly right. Uh, it is a beautiful facility. Um, been open now, I guess, what, a couple of months? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, Kenton and, and all the folks, Sue Bach, Lee Miller, lots of people that did a lot of work to get us to this point have done a great job getting us here. A wonderful example of public-private cooperative project. Um, the the, the uh, total cost of the project was $1.7 million and basically it was a split between the city, the city commissioners uh, embracing the project and not just embracing it but putting, putting money where your mouths were and um, also of course the private sector and, and their, their support of this great, beautiful facility and if you haven't been here you need to come. Uh, because it really is something for our community to be, community to be so very, very proud of. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like the design of it is more casual. It's like a bookstore. Bookstore, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The bookstore style where I was, I don't do this very often, but I had an opportunity to be in Books, of, Books a Million mm -hmm. uh, just a few days ago. And, and it's, that's what this is. I mean, it is, I don't know that, they, that it's, they've got a million books, they probably <laughs> do, but, uh, but it is that kind of setup and it's, it's so user friendly and, and just the areas that are set up, the children's area, the teen area, I guess this is the adult area <laughs> where, so. where we are. Uh, it's just a wonderful setup. Uh, of course, Tom Trotter was the, was the architect, and, and not just Tom, he would be the first to say that, but his whole staff. And, and again, conjunction with Kenton, and I think they had another library consultant that, that came in as it related to the actual setup and the furnishings and the colors and lighting and those kinds of things. So it has been done right, mm -hmm. which is uh, generally how, how we like to do things in Gallenberg. So I think the library certainly has stepped up to the plate and they've done a great job. I, I agree with you totally, and, and uh, just sitting there looking at all the, the windows and how uh, just well lit it is and just the uh, furnishings. Looking really at nice. that gorgeous mount, those gorgeous mountains out there, um, Kenton would want me to say this and Sue and, and, and the other folks that are so involved with the, with the library, um, there, there's still fundraising that is occurring. Right. Um, mainly through the um, through the aquarium luau, mm -hmm. uh, so we want to to not act like that the door is closed on the opportunities to contribute here. There is also a specific fundraising effort related to some stained glass, a, a design that Bill May has done, and probably a lot of folks have heard about that. Um, and I think that's like a thirty thousand dollar goal. Mm -hmm to be able to put some, some nice stained glass above the, the library area. Uh, I'm not sure what we call that area over there, but, mm -hmm. but where you do check out the libraries and, and I mean the books, I'm sorry, and those kind of things. So uh, there is still that um, effort that the library is about to raise funds for that stained glass project as well. So uh, anyone still wanting to participate, there's plenty of opportunity and contact the library folks to, to be about doing that. Good deal. The opportunity is still there. Absolutely. Good deal. Okay. Okay, we just went through a uh, very challenging process, the yearly process of the city budget. Uh, tell us about that. I know this has been a challenge this year. Well, you sat at the table with us, so uh, of course prior to that, lots of work, and I say this, this is, this is repetitive, but it's important to say that there's a lot of people that work very hard on this effort, um, beginning with at the department head level, and then of course David Beeler and I Assistant City Manager, Finance Director, uh, work and, and pull that together. But um, it's no secret, uh, this isn't like some earth shattering news bulletin here, but uh, we still are uh, struggling with the economy. Um, I think certainly we're uh, doing better than many resort areas. However, we um, have been about 
curtailing expenses. Actually, as you know, as a city commissioner, began that process a year at the first of this calendar year when we realized that we were not meeting revenue expectations. And we began uh, in January um, making cuts at that time for the remainder of that fiscal year. Um, and, and somewhere in the neighborhood of four to, it really varied from the general fund to the utilities fund to the tourism fund and all this gets either boring or confusing <laughs> or both, but um, there, were, there were varying percentages by those respective funds that, that we had to try to cut expenses to stay within the budget. And, and, and we're pretty successful doing so. We'll, not, we'll be reporting to you much more specifically and definitively about that when the audit is complete, which will be, as you know, we'll present that to you sometime in December. So uh, that set the stage to move into building a budget that is less than the appropriation for the previous fiscal year. And the, some numbers I wrote down here in terms of, now this is in terms of expenditures, the proposed budget expenditure wise for the general fund uh, is 6.87% uh, less than last year's appropriated budget. Uh, for the utilities is like 10.99% less, and then in the tourism budget is a little over 7% less. This is the first budget, speaking of less, this is the first budget that we actually projected a revenue decrease since I've been around. So. Uh, we we did that um, not wanting to be negative but being realistic mm -hmm. in, in seeing what, what the situation is with the recession and with the economy. Uh, so thus far uh, this calendar year we're running and this is in relationship to gross receipts which is the main uh, barometer of, of what's going on in our Gatlinburg economy. We are running I guess around 8% behind for January through June of this calendar year versus the same period last year. The actual fiscal year, and here again all this stuff gets a little... Complicated. Well, it's, it, it is and it is, and I mean if you're in it like, like we are, it isn't, but if you're not, it is. Uh, but the fiscal year ended up being, uh, gross receipts wise, really overall wise, 4.8% down. So we're still below double digit negative percentage numbers. And again, based on what I hear um, through my own city managers, you know, municipal association type uh, networks, uh, that's, we're still faring pretty well. So basically, you know, we are affected by the downturn in the economy like the rest of the world and the rest of our country, but there are a lot of places that are much worse off than we are, and we still are able to maintain and supply all of the services, which is number one important. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, and that is an, that's an extremely important point is that uh, you, you elected officials have made it clear to us thus far that, that you want us to do everything to not curtail services and so that is what we're able to still be about at this stage in the game um, you know I wish me you or Kevin had that crystal ball to look into and to say well this is when we're going to come out of it um, I think that there was some hope back in the early summer that the whole country would be coming out of the recession by the late summer, and, and I don't think that's come to fruition as much as, as was hoped. So, you know, we don't know, and we just have to do the best that we can to sustain the service delivery, um, tighten our belts, mm -hmm. and not just talk about it, but do it, and that is truly what we, ha we have done administratively, because we've had to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone understands that, and that's really important that that everyone's together in the effort to be able to be successful in doing what we want to do, which is still to provide the best services that we can without major tax increases and to be able to um, keep it together mm -hmm. until the, the economy 
uh, across the country improves. Well, thankfully, people still like to go on vacation. And Gatlinburg is, there's so much stuff to do and it's very affordable. Right. I think that's what's helped us a lot. Right, and it, and it always has helped us. Mm -hmm. um, and so it will continue to do that. I mean, we are, we are in these gorgeous mountains and um, they're not going anywhere and we're not hopefully going anywhere and <laughs> right. so so you know I I think that that things will um, I'd like to see it turn around you know we all would um, sooner uh, than later but in the meantime I think we all either in public sector or private sector recognize that we just have to, the old saying, hunker down. Right, okay, what else do we have? Well, uh, speaking of uh, the mountains, um, let me make a couple of comments, and you as well. Okay. Um, we're here, any, most of us are here because of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park for whether, again, it be public employment or private business and private employment. Um, I mean, that is why Gatlinburg is what it is. Right. Um, so we have a, um, we're, we're very, we're codependent. I, I hope we're codependent. I hope that the park sees it that way. I think they do. I think they do. I think they do. With the park. And of course they have, um, they've had just been celebrating their 75th anniversary. And boy, have they done a tremendous job with uh, two or three very, very big, um, difficult, I'm sure, to coordinate and manage events. The most recent one that, that we attended, and, and Kevin was up there too, was the, uh, the rededication of the park at Newfound Gap. And was that not a it, tremendous experience? It was great. Tell me a little bit about your day uh, of the 75th uh, rededication from getting on the bus to uh, going up there a little few of the high spots you <laughs> hit those. Well actually I thought it was pretty neat. It was it really was neat you know I was uh, I was dreading uh, the bus ride because I'm for one thing I'm not real good in a car on mountain <laughs> roads much less than a bus but um, but you know it was just so well coordinated yeah. and got right on the bus in, in you know in Pigeon Forge where we were all told uh, assigned to go to we right. were told to go to and we dutifully went and um, and the bus was comfortable and enjoyable and got up to Newfound Gap and uh, the weather was really iffy mm -hmm. and then God blessed it and the sun came out and it was just gorgeous um, the the dolly part of it was you well, know I, I don't i don't care what you're celebrating if you got dolly that's going to make it happen yeah um so she she made you know she was as you well know she was just great and and yet didn't take over everything right. you know she she she's her humility right. came out yeah. she was just glad to be a part of right it, right exactly and that's a great way to put it and so she she made the event certainly and and uh, at the end, you know, the last song when she sang, and at the end of, toward the end of the song, you know, the, the, the smoke, the mist came rising up, I'm pointing over here because it was <laughs> over to my left hand side. And it was just, I mean, it, it, I, a couple of people said, if you, if you don't, if you don't believe in God, how, you know, you'd have to now, surely, but. Um, very was, moving. It, very was... moving and just an absolutely uh, terrific happening. And then uh, just lined up and just zip, got right on the bus <laughs> and zip right down the mountain. And, you know, it was, it was um, I had the chance to see um, Dale at a function recently. And, and, and all the park employees that I've seen, I have highly commended yeah. them for doing just a great job. I've heard so many people comment that everyone did an excellent job in that Lamar Alexander really sort of put the icing on the cake with his comments, but uh, yes. Bredesen to North Carolina's governor, mm -hmm. it, was, it was, I was thinking I wouldn't have wanted to be the last person to talk because pretty much everybody else got a chance to say everything, but everybody was really speaking from the heart and it, mm -hmm. and it came across really Yeah, really it, was, it, was a, it was a very, very reverent, special event mm -hmm. because everyone recognizes, I think, how important this park is to all of us in the in this East Tennessee and the Western North Carolina part of things. 
Um, I, I want to make two other side comments. One is, if I had been a politician up on stage, I would have, I, I think the term is deferred all my time to Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have. And save the, I, save the it, uh, yeah, stress. Yeah, sa save the stress. I, I don't think I would have, I, I would have tried to compete with, with that. Yeah. But of course, she didn't want that. You know, as you said, she was so, she was, she was She's really great. quite humble. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is to say that, um, uh, there is a uh, the Ken Burns series that's running right now about America's best idea, the national parks, um, and I'm sure they don't need a plug for it, but I would just say that um, uh, Bud and I have been able to watch that two or three nights this week, and uh, Kevin was talking about he's watched it. I don't think you've had a chance to no, see it yet, but it is, um, and they're selling, I think, DVDs, and there's a book and, and all kinds of things that you can get. It will be available here at the library. Okay, Kevin says, and it will be available here at the library, but it really, I mean, we love our park so much, but mm -hmm. then when you watch this from the national perspective to realize the, the foresight of these folks that they talk so much about, to create these parks is just, it's, it's really amazing, so. You know, one thing that I felt, and I think a lot of people did, that almost everyone there, there were a little over 2,000 people at the event, but they really wanted to be there. And it was something that they all had some connection with. And when they had the people that were born in the park uh -huh. all stand up, and some of the CCC workers uh -huh. that were there, I think one gentleman was 100 years old. It was it just, like you said, to put it in perspective how much it means to us and uh, it was just a great event and how and how again I say this all the time I need to change it up somehow <laughs> but I, but how blessed we are mm -hmm. to be in this part of the world to live and work in this gorgeous part of the world it's just is we're just so so blessed and so we so the so very much congratulations and kudos yeah to to Dale and all of the 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 staff with the with the Great Smoky Mountains National Park because they have done a tremendous job. I agree. I agree. So after that, we want to talk about. Um, I think what we I, I guess what we would go to now would be um, to to keep on bragging. Okay. Surely no one expects that we would do anything but brag in a setting like this. Um, and that is to talk about our uh, municipal golf course, yes. our Gatlinburg golf course, and the fact that... Just got some award. Yes, sir. The, the Golf Digest, which I understand from golfers, um, and my brother-in-law, I think I've mentioned this before, is, is a huge, avid golfer. So he, conf he, yeah. he confirmed that the Golf Digest is the magazine of golfing in the golfing world and they recognized or rated Gatlinburg's course as Tennessee's best municipal course so we're very proud of that Absolutely. and that has a whole lot to do with the capital projects that uh, you and your fellow commissioners authorized over the last what year and a half two years couple years mm -hmm. and you know we've spent I guess close to $2 million between the, some hull renovations and improvements, which was what was done first, and then of course the new clubhouse, and uh, encourage people, by the way, to go to this clubhouse. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is. Uh, whether you golf or not, you can. You're welcome to go down there, and there's uh, uh, some some good food down there mm -hmm. that you can have. There's a nice pro shop and some nice souvenirs that can be sure. picked up. Good retail, so, great shirts, yes, caps. Yes, exactly. You know, uh, the whole renovations. And I'm not a golfer. You know, I don't golf, but. It made a lot of sense because when it came to the table and we were talking about it, it was one way to speed up play and to make the holes a little more enjoyable. And that's the feedback I've received from people that have been guests from different areas, but they come and they play the Gat mm -hmm. Gatlinburg course. And they comment, they love the clubhouse, but how the play is so much more enjoyable. So I want to thank the people that had the input, you know, on how important this was that it, it is, had, has come true. Right, right. And, and obviously the Golf Digest has recognized it. And the way that I understand it is that um, they came in secretively. Would that be the right way to put it? Sure. I mean, Rick Tucker, our golf pro, didn't know 
uh, until it was announced. So they they had sent in a, a group or two. I don't know how many. We don't know exactly That's how good. it worked. That's but, great. But unbeknownst to us, uh, they came in and evaluated the situation and, and, and then recognized our course as the best municipal course in the state of Tennessee. So we're very, very proud of that. And again, That's encourage great. people, whether you golf or not, to go to, go to the facility. facility. We're going to talk about ma mountain views, some gorgeous mountain views down mm -hmm. there. Uh, that you don't, you wouldn't necessarily anticipate, but there's some some great views down there. So we're very very proud of of the golf course. And the uh, and, and and Rick Tucker and the whole crew down there do do a great job. Rick Tucker and Jeff Rumpf, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention sure, them. So sure. uh, we appreciate everything that they do. And thankfully this year, instead of being a drought, we've had excellent rain. So the course is in, from what I hear, because I don't golf, but in excellent, superb condition. Right. So, so everyone that watches this needs to go out and, and, golf. and golf. Absolutely. You and I could go down there, but then it wouldn't be in such great condition after we got through. So we better we better not we'll, do we'll that. Watch. We'll watch. The only course I almost flanked at UT was golf, so I don't think I need to do that. So, uh, I, I guess the quickest story that comes to my mind is uh, back when our uh, good friend and uh, pro Cotton Barrier uh -huh. was the pro, and I was trying to get into golf a little bit, and I went out and. He said, don't worry, so I can get your game straightened out here in just a, a <laughs> short time. And it was about an hour and a half later. He says, maybe it's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> this may not be for yeah. you. I love it. Band-aids all over my hands. Yeah. So. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, we have a couple of other, I, I guess this would be a good time to uh, just make the comment in regards to the winter lights because we are getting ready to, believe it or not, it's hard for me to believe. They're putting them up. I've They're, seen the trucks we're out. We're putting them yeah. up, and the kickoff event is scheduled for early November. And so two or three things to say in that regard is that, one, all of the lights. Last year, they the, the final full conversion of all of our winter lights to LED occurred. And we know for a fact that not only do they really look good, crisper, brighter, mm -hmm. all those kind of things, but that there has been a 75% reduction, 77%, close, close to 80%, to 80. Okay. <laughs> reduction in electrical uh, fees. So it's, it's, it's a great deal. It's not often that you get a better product and cost less. That's true. But they do, they're so much more vibrant, the colors and the displays. It's just, it's really beautiful. Yeah. And so, so that's that's a good thing. And then, I, then also to mention that the kickoff event will actually be on Parkway. And you uh, commissioners authorized this uh, here recently, but actually uh, going back to the Spring Fest event in April mm -hmm. uh, was the rib second. Yes, sir, the Rib mm -hmm. Fest event, and that. And wings to to to, <laughs> to 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 the best of my knowledge that this past spring's rib fest and yes. wings event is only the second time that Parkway has been closed. You all think that's probably I right? I think you're right for for a special event, street mm -hmm. party, whatever you want to call it, festival. Um, Parkway, I'm saying, and so um, so we did have a. It was a very good experience for not just the visitor and us locals uh, coming to the event, but it actually worked well for the police department and the fire department, and that's always been of great concern from right. an administrative standpoint. And so with that, you all authorize this um, this coming winter lights kickoff to also be on Parkway, basically the same. Uh, areas the same venue and so I think it will be um, be a better event because there will be more room and we know that that's really what we need for particularly this winter lights event so I think it will be very positive I do want to state for the record that from from the administrative perspective of, of myself and, and the chiefs uh, this is something, and particularly the police chief, this is something very manageable for these events that are happening on Wednesday evenings right. for, you know, a few hours. Right. Maybe some, at some, someday this can evolve to, to something more than that, but right now that's what makes it 
uh, very viable and, and able to be um, handled as well as it has been. I know after the April event there was a lot of excitement, a lot of people really enjoyed it and the uniqueness of having it on our uh, downtown Main Street is is just great and I think we've probably learned a few things from the first event that we can tweak a little on this one and uh, you know it's, it's a special thing and uh, Gatlinburg is a walking community and people just love the idea of being able to walk on the street so it's uh, it's going to be a, another good event. I think so too and and the walkability is is right on the money uh, that is what makes us so special and special. unique is yeah. the pedestrian nature of town so uh, I know that you've been a proponent of, of doing this for some time and for those kind of reasons and, and I think that uh, the success of, of Ribfest will only lend, lead to further success now with the with, with the winter lights kickoff. Can't wait. Okay sounds good. Yes ma'am. Okay you want me to go next? You're on a roll just keep going. I gotcha. Uh, the, the next the next thing that, that we had listed here to talk about is related to the severe solid waste. Um, actually, the reopening of the composting facility. Uh, okay, why was it closed? It was closed because of a fire that basically destroyed the previous facility. Um, Memorial Day, let's see, what year is this? This is 2009. Eight. It was even seven, I think. Seven, I think. A couple yeah. Of years. Yeah. yeah. It took it took uh, it took almost a couple of years to get the new facility uh, constructed and reopened, and I think you and Kevin are going to be doing a special spot on that, which is really what needs to happen because it's it's very important to mm -hmm. the county. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. And it's and it's something that that deserves its own its own program. Uh, to really do justice to it, but I would just make a couple of comments, which is that it is reopened, that due to the composting process that is used, that and all of the garbage in the county goes there. So this isn't just about Gatlinburg, this is about all, all of our sister cities in the county, that you know we have there is a there is a reduc a waste reduction right there that is anywhere from 70 to 80 percent. It is a tremendously high reduction rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, Explain that a little bit, the reduction rate. The reduction rate is the fact that we're able to compost mm -hmm. so much of the waste that comes, 70 to 80 percent of the waste that comes into the facility is able to be composted. And, and not just put into the ground. Correct, not just raw, garbage going into to the landfill mm -hmm. but this is the comp co i think it's technically called co-compost process now this is why you all need to do a specific <laughs> interview with tom leonard to get into the to the details of the technology of it um but i think that's important is how important that is and we're one of the few in the country, if not the world, exactly. that has that exactly and land is so scarce in this county and so valuable I, you know, I know it's important, I know we do talk about it, but I think it needs to really be showcased a little bit more right. because of the going green, the recycling in the country and the world and whatnot, but this has such a huge impact. Absolutely, and again, the reason for you all to do, I, I think that you all did a, did a, a uh, show or a program with Tom Leonard a couple of years ago, I'm sure even obviously before the fire. So right. I know that you'll be doing that soon, and I encourage folks to watch that to to really hear somebody that knows a whole lot more about what they're talking about discuss that. Um, we have discussed that, and, and I actually brought this up at the uh, last uh, solid waste board meeting, and, and maybe I just need to remind everyone that the severe solid waste board is made up of representatives from the three cities, and I represent us. Mm -hmm. And the city man, the city administrator in Sevierville represents Sevierville city manager in Pigeon Forge, represents Pigeon Forge, and then the um, mayor of our county, the Sevier County Mayor. That is what constitutes the board. And then there's interlocal agreements with all of the, those respective governmental entities in regards to us taking our waste to the facility those kind of things. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we had a, had a discussion at the last board meeting about an idea that, that you had mentioned to me and reminded me about here recently, and that is to get a message on all of our garbage trucks, to let the public, to let the visiting yeah. public, the living here public know about the fact that 70% of the waste, like I say, 70, 80% of the waste is is being recycled, actually reduced in, in the regards of the compost process. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we are to be looking at some ideas about how to do that um, okay. at the next board meeting and, and hopefully we'll be able to, to get that done on all of the, all of the garbage um, trucks in the area. I think that's great and I think it speaks a loud message to our guests, to the tourists that come here because a lot of times they'll ask, well, why is why this area recycling? Well, we are recycling mm -hmm. in a much bigger manner. Yeah, than, than and, the and we need to say um, that also the, the recycling containers are still out in yes. our community and very, you know, use them. Yes. Uh, you know, we're not trying to suggest that that this does totally replace recycling, but yet it puts our county in a very unique position that, like you say, most places in the in the country are not in, or even in the world, that there is this composting, major composting facility and process taking place that really reduces the the the, the raw garbage going into the going into the landfill. Plus the win win is that compost is is great. I uh -huh. mean it, it's uh, well used by farmers, uh, uh, contractors, side dressing on uh, uh, landscaping and whatnot. So right. it's got a, a, a really good value to right. it. So that's a win win there too. Yes sir. Yes sir. So I think that would be I think I will uh, like I said earlier I need to I need to do what I said the politicians should have done to Dolly. <laughs> I, I'll uh, I'll defer to um, to your okay. future um, uh, discussion with Tom Leonard and and I think you guys are talking about literally going down there and filming and I think oh, yeah. that will really be great. The facility is 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 one of those bigger, better Huge, kind of things. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, it's not. Uh, it's not real pretty like this facility that we're right. sitting in here because it is what it is. But so I, I will defer to to you. You're you're doing that with Tom and and getting some some even better explanation about all the great things that are going on down there. You know the the fire was a disaster, but out of the fire, like you said, it's bigger, better. Uh, I think of one thing, and, and we're looking forward to doing the uh, the uh, filming of it, but this large building where they can windrow the compost right. and it dries so much faster, the little ditches they had before was uh, not always the best way to do right. it. So right. it's, it's a great facility. Yes, so um, okay. the, the, and, the, and I think a good segue into fr from that is to talk about our um, internal green efforts, the, the fact that, uh, and I, I know I've mentioned on this show before that, or this program that um, we did start an internal green committee to try to improve what we're doing in that in sustainability efforts as it relates just to the to the city organization itself to the city facilities um, the chamber of course is is continuing a very good aggressive effort with their private business I think they're up to having 170 um, businesses in the green program, mm -hmm. um, and I, I that that's really great. Um, I know that they haven't met their goal, but that's they they have I think doubled or tripled even just over the the last several months the private business participation in their program, and so that's great and, and great compliments to Vicky and all the staff there for what they're what they're doing at the chamber. But back to the to the city. Uh, perspective is that uh, we have continued to come up with some ideas and programs such as really simple things like you know changing out the lights to uh, compact compact fluorescent lighting uh, as we can uh, as uh, well number one is the lights go out and then secondly even replacing them if, if the budgets are allowing which of course budgets have been as I mentioned earlier the budgets right. have not allowed a lot of that but also um, doing just doing some simple things, just having containers throughout the employee lounges where you can put in, pop in your plastic or your aluminum, 
and um, and d very simple. These are what we uh, we call in the business the low hanging fruit things, kind of thing, mm -hmm. kind of things that you do, but but they do make a difference. And um, our city green committee, uh, I met with them late last week, and we are continuing to to look at some. Uh, different things in regards to solar power and had a presentation from a actually a, a local representative of a company about that uh, recycling batteries through a, through a program so uh, this is on top of, of all the other efforts that the city has already been about and I want to emphasize that but I just want to simply say that we are continuing our internal effort to, to be as aggressive as we can be within budgetary constraints to, um, to improve what we're doing uh, for, the, for the good of the environment and the good of the cause, I guess. I, th I think that's so important. And uh, going back again, that we're a neighbor to the national park. And I think you know, the, the whole country has been going green. The world is looking at going greener daily. And I think it's just so important that it's, it makes everyone a little bit more responsible. And when you do these things, you definitely feel better about yourself and what you're doing. So it's a mindset. And then when solar and wind of some of these become more, uh, I think, accessible right. and affordable, Bible, yeah. then uh, we're in the mindset that we can move in that direction. So I, I think this is great. and. Uh, uh, you know, the private and public working together will make it much more successful. Absolutely, absolutely. So that that would be uh, that would be that on that topic. Okay. Uh, just a couple of more things would be um, to talk about our convention center. Uh, we often do this filming there, but we're of course at this wonderful library today. But as it relates to the convention center, um, now this is hard to believe. This is. This is hard to believe, but time just flies by whether you're having fun or not. Um, 20th anniversary of obviously not the redo of Mills that just happened three or four years ago, but the 20th anniversary of the convention center is this year. And we will be uh, doing certainly not anything on the scale of what uh, the park has been doing. Um, again, due to budgetary constraints, but, uh, but we will be doing um, an event uh, sometime in November to recognize that. Um, I, don't, I don't think people realize how important the convention center has been to the economy of this town. Um, I go back, and you do, and Kevin does, to all the controversy and, I guess, uh, debate that occurred that, mm -hmm. that led, you know, there was actually a referendum that even it was held to to say yay or nay on, on moving forward with the convention center and and I don't want to dredge up all that except to say that it was it, it was it was somewhat controversial um, and and I don't think it is now I right. hope it's not now uh, and to say that it has had a really tremendous economic impact on our community probably representing somewhere between 18 and 20 percent of the total gross business of our town and you know that may not sound like a lot but if you don't have that that's a nice See, chunk yeah. out of the out of the economic picture um, something that they wrote down here for me is that during the 2008 calendar year more than 607,000 attendees participated in events at the convention center and the WL Mills Conference Center. Uh, contracted bookings continue to run ahead of the pace set for this year in both events and event days. And you know, there, there's a way that they say, you know, they estimate how much a convention person spends per day or, or an attendee spends per day and, and those kind of things. But, but it, is, it is a very important part of our economic, uh, like I said, economic picture. And uh, so uh, we're, we're pleased about what's going on there and, uh, and appreciate the, the Department of Tourism and, and Convention Center folks and all their hard work and efforts that continue to, to sustain that facility and keep it successful. 
You know, I'm really proud of the convention center. It's hard to believe it is 20 years, mm -hmm. but it, what's really neat with the new addition is we've got this, in the older part, a huge exhibit hall for a lot of the exhibit type conventions we have. And then with the new part, we have a beautiful banquet hall. We're getting mm -hmm. some of the professional groups that we were missing before. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's beautiful. And then also you have the residual of people that may come here to a convention, go home, word of mouth, which we mm -hmm. know is the best advertising there is, and tell people about Gatlinburg. Exactly. So uh, exactly. It's, uh, it, it's a great part of, of our uh, whole package here in the right. community. Right, and uh, in, in the work that the 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 Mills Conference Center, mm -hmm. uh, the that renovation and that whole process that that led to a much more cooperative way of the community working its way through than low those 25 years ago when there was the Referendum. uh, yeah, referendums <laughs> and controversy that was going on there speaks a lot about the um, the growth of our community, I guess, and in the the ability to to uh, collaborate to work to, to work yeah. together no, good and, point. and that's good and, point. and that's a that's a that's a great thing too so the last item that I have I think unless Kevin reminds us of something <laughs> that we've left out uh, would be um, and, and I don't quite know how to segue to this so I'll just this. just jump right into it uh, would be in regards to our flood evacuation plan and our flood warning system and um, of course what inspires talking about this right now is that we had heavy rains this past weekend, uh, something like three and a half inches over a six, seven hour period. And we just barely missed going into a major flood situation and reverently thank God that we didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and it was truly that, I mean, it was truly just about that close, literally. Uh, to to that when it when the rain stopped and the and the front moved out um, and that was I guess somewhere around seven ish on on Saturday, Saturday. evening but yep. in the meantime and, and so I want to make a comment about a specific situation and then talk about the overall uh, flood plan and flood warning system uh, the specific situation because I know there's a lot of folks that either have uh, rental properties on Ski View Road or even reside on Ski View Road. Bud and I used to, to live up there uh, when we were first married. Um, is the fact that there was a slide um, underneath Ski View Road actually. There was an evacuation of, of some guests in a cabin. Uh, the um, fire chief Greg Miller and all of those folks and the police department did a great job in dealing with that uh, evacuation situation and you know no one being harmed was of course that you know people make fun and say well what are you going to do what, what what's what are you going to do when there's high water you're going to go stop it well of course we're not going to go stop it but what it's about is managing the situation right. to where no one gets hurt mm -hmm. much less the ultimate uh, bad thing mm -hmm. um, as in dying so mm -hmm. that's what it's about is is managing the situation that you have at hand and and the uh the police and fire departments did an excellent job in doing that and then followed by the uh, the street department folks had to of course come in but and and utilities manager and utility folks and city planner and, and lots of folks that that um, that it's our jobs but but you still want to recognize them mm -hmm. and thank them for all those efforts so we we have an emergency repair occurring as we speak um, at, to, to this slide situation up on Ski View Road because it's very much an emergency repair situation um, and so the road there's one lane closed for a, for, a, for a relatively brief distance but yet it's impactful again the reason I'm mentioning this on Ski View Road so the uh, the temporary fix will be completed by uh, by the end of this week and then they will move into a uh, the company that we have brought in that's done other retaining wall work for us on Ski Mountain Road they will come in and begin the permanent fix uh, the first part of next week and so within a couple of weeks three at the most we hope to have the road fully reopened and safed up and mm -hmm. and all those kind of things so 
uh, wanted to say that, but also the overriding thing here is to say that, again, we are in a very good position to manage these situations in that we have both a flood warning system and a flood evacuation plan. And not many communities in the country have both. A lot of places have one or the other, but the, the city of Gatlinburg years ago worked real closely with TVA to develop the plan and we've updated it a time or two even even since you've been on city commission and then also with TVA work with them to put the flood warning system in place so uh, so so we've got a good system and want to a good plan a good overall uh, combined with a good system uh, situation and just want to comment on that since we have just come off of a potential a high water situation and and assure the the residents and the guests that um, that we've got it. We've got a good program, and that's good uh, preventive, uh, I guess, planning. Right. You know, in case the the worst case scenario does happen. Right. We're not looking at each other, going, "What do we yeah. do now?" We yeah. do. Yeah. And, and it's well tested. You know, in 1993 was when we did have the flood, mm -hmm. one of the floods, but the most recent flood flooding in in our recent history and. Um, and I and I you know it it took it took a while to get everything straightened out from there but again the key being to protect folks as much as possible and um, and I think that we've got a good good program to do that so just wanted to comment on that just coming off of the mm -hmm. of the high water situation when does uh, when is the water to the level that the sirens will go off the the sirens go off when we go into level this is a pop quiz okay and I just looked at this <laughs> yesterday the sirens go off when we get to level two or three and that would be basically coming above the aquarium bridge level okay. one is is when it hits eight feet at the aquarium bridge which is is our Greystone Heights bridge which is basically at, at the right underneath mm -hmm. the bridge and so when the water starts flowing over that bridge then it's time for the sirens to be going off and we've hope we've already begun evacuations and those kind of things okay good deal anything else you'd like to uh talk about I don't think so sir mention? I believe we've just covered our usual hodgepodge <laughs> of, of happenings well you know the thing that uh, really strikes me is the world is in economic turmoil the country is uh, I know a lot of people here have uh, gone through some hard times and have suffered some but we are in better shape than a lot of other places and there are a lot of things happening in Gatlinburg and you see new things under construction and, yes. and uh, you know you see people coming into town and, and I'm excited about the future and uh, I want to thank you for the job you do and I know that you rally the department heads and say we've got to work together and, and get through this so uh, you know October's coming uh, special events a lot of good things mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm.